Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Leva Z2. This is a fanless mini PC powered by an N5000 or N4100 Gemini Lake processor. It looks very similar to the Intel NUC, but there is no fan, which means it can run completely silently depending on what hard drives you choose to put inside of it. And we're going to take a closer look at this in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Leva. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this device is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, this is going to start at $175 for a version with an Intel N4100 Gemini Lake processor. That's a quad-core chip. Now the review unit they sent to me has an N5000 processor inside. I'm not sure if they're offering that one for sale because I can't find it on Amazon and I did ask them about it prior to shooting and didn't get an answer back. So the chances are uh, what you'll see out of this one will be slightly faster than what you may end up getting. So just bear that in mind, but I don't think there's a huge difference between the N5000 and 4100 uh, for most of the things that we're going to demonstrate in this video. Uh, they don't give you any RAM for that price though, so you'll need to bring your own RAM to the mix or buy it. Uh, it takes DDR4 RAM. It'll work in dual channel configuration. I do strongly suggest that you buy two sticks of RAM to occupy the memory banks on this one because it does run better when you've got two sticks versus one. Uh, there's also no operating system included. Uh, so in our testing, we'll be doing Windows for most of this video. It works fine with Windows 10. And at the end of the video, we'll check out its Linux compatibility as well. It does, though, have some built-in storage. It includes 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage, uh, which is enough to maybe get Windows installed and that kind of thing. But it also has a 2.5-inch SATA slot inside the case, so you can get a 2.5-inch SATA SSD if you want or a spinning hard drive to put more storage inside of it. So you do have the option to uh, choose your RAM and your storage. I believe you can go up to eight gigabytes of RAM on this particular device here. Now their marketing materials also indicate that there's a set of GPIO pins on the motherboard. However, when I took this review unit apart, they were not there. So you'll want to maybe check with them if you wanted to see if those addressable pins are in fact on the device. My test unit did not have those. You do though have a lot of ports on here three USB 3.0 ports here in the front, along with a USB Type-C connector. This is data only though. You can't get video out of there or have power going into it. It's just strictly for connecting up hard drives and other USB Type-C data devices. You also have a headphone jack here in the front along with the power switch. On this side, you have a Kensington lock for locking it down. They also give you a Visa mount in the box to put it on the back of a monitor, for example, if you wish to do that. That's a nice solution given how quiet it is. Uh, your power gets plugged in here. You have two HDMI ports on the back. Now you'll notice that one of them is labeled HDMI 2.0 and the other one is not. And from what I'm reading in their product specifications, it looks like only one of these ports is in fact an HDMI 2.0 port, which means that unlike the Intel NUC, you can't get two 4K displays both running at 60 frames per second. This model did work that way, but again, I think from what I'm reading on their product specifications that uh, your 60 hertz will only come out of the uh, labeled port here. So just bear that in mind. You may not get uh, 60 hertz 4K out of that port, although both should support uh, 1080p at 60 frames per second. You also have two USB 2.0 ports here in the back, so I would suggest hooking up your mice and keyboards and whatnot to these two ports and you have gigabit ethernet as well for connecting it up to your network with a cable. It also supports 802.11 AC wireless. You'll have fast wireless available to you and it's got Bluetooth built in as well. Now it's a very low powered device and we hooked up a kilowatt to it to see what its power draw was under load. Uh, and there we were seeing about eight and a half to nine watts tops when it's under load for an extended period of time. So very limited power consumption. At idle, it was about five watts, uh, which is not bad. And that was running on Windows. So I think if you're looking at this maybe as a Plex server or something that you might want to use and have on all the time, it's really not going to consume much of anything. Uh, if you are considering Plex usage, it does support QuickSync through its processor. 
I would estimate that you'll probably get maybe two or three uh, hardware transcoding streams going at the same time out of this. Not a heck of a lot, but certainly enough to support a small number of viewers that uh, might be connecting to your server. So there's a lot of potential here without a lot of power consumption. And of course, it stays completely silent while it's operating. Performance is pretty good on the device for general computing tasks. We loaded up my YouTube channel and browsed a video that runs at 1080p at 60 frames per second. We didn't have any drop frames or skips or anything like that. Uh, we were, of course, using the Edge browser on Windows because it does handle some of those videos a little better than Chrome does. Uh, but general video playback was fine for Netflix and other services as well. We also browsed the web and just went to the nasa.gov website, and that was also pretty snappy and responsive both over Wi-Fi and Ethernet. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 65.4 on the 1.0 version of that test and 38.4 on the version 2.0. Remember that this device, though, came with the N5000 processor versus the N4100 that it's shipping in. So I think you'll see slightly lower scores, maybe close to what you see there with the Chewy Lapbook SE, uh, which is also running with the N4100 processor. But overall, if you're using the computer, you're not going to feel uh, any real sluggishness. It'll actually be pretty surprising given the uh, relatively low power consumption that these things uh, use. And we also ran our usual Microsoft Word test. So if you're doing Office or Excel or other kinds of productivity applications, I think the experience will be very usable uh, considering the price point and power consumption. Now these devices are not great for gaming, but you can run games on them. We'll start with Minecraft running at about 36 to 60 frames per second, depending on what was going on on screen. Uh, this is the Java version of Minecraft that most people still run. Uh, we also ran Rocket League at 1080p with the lowest settings, and we were getting frame rates there between 20 and 25 frames per second. Uh, that's with the dual channel memory, by the way, so you'll see uh, lower performance if you only have a single stick of RAM in there. So not great for the modern stuff, but some older games and casual games like Half-Life 2 here uh, will run pretty nicely. Half-Life 2 has given us between 37 and 50 frames per second at 1080p, uh, so I think a lot of the older stuff will work great on here. Uh, you could probably have a good experience with retro emulation. I would say uh, the Sony PlayStation Nintendo 64 backwards should be good. Uh, I would not use these for uh, running the GameCube or any of the other modern or more modern uh, game consoles, but certainly the older stuff should emulate quite nicely on it. And on the 3 d Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 2,590. I do think we'll see scores closer to what we're seeing out of the HP stream on the shipping unit, but it'll be close to that. Uh, but take a look at the Intel NUC, the one powered by the J5005. Uh, that one has almost double the graphics performance just because that processor is a little faster uh, and it consumes more power. But again, it's not fanless. So if you're looking for something completely silent running, uh, that's the performance hit you'll take. But still, for a PC with this amount of power consumption, the performance really isn't all that bad. And on the 3D Mark Stress Test, we got a score of 96.2%. Now, passing is 97%, so it's very close to a passing grade. Not quite, though, uh, but it does indicate that the computer won't throttle all that much when it's under load, so you should see relatively consistent performance. But my advice would be to make sure that you keep these vents clear so that you have your natural airflow going through its passive cooling system. If these get blocked, you'll certainly uh, see some throttling or some kind of overheating conditions. And I think its design really depends on that airflow being there. So keep the sides clear, and I think you'll have a good experience here. So let's take a look now at Cody and its home theater performance. We'll start with the Jellyfish test file that you see on screen. We've got this HEVC file, 140 megabits per second, 4K, 10-bit. It is decoding it properly with no drop frames. That's a nice hardware feature of these Gemini Lake processors, so you should be able to run uh, some pretty high-end stuff on here. Uh, note, though, that Gemini Lake doesn't support HDR through the HDMI output, so you will be limited to uh, standard color space stuff here, nothing fancier than that. Uh, we also hooked it up to my home theater receiver, and there we were able to get DTS HD audio to pass through successfully along with Dolby True HD audio, uh, and it does 24p switches as well. So I think from the home theater perspective, if you are uh, mostly at 1080p, uh, this should 
be a good choice for that. All right, one last thing to check out, and that is its Linux performance. We've got Firefox running here. Everything seems to be working properly. Audio is working, Wi-Fi is working, Bluetooth also works, and of course the display is working properly along with the USB and everything else. So I think you'll have a pretty decent Linux experience on here as well, at least with Ubuntu and some of its similar uh, distributions here. That's the one thing that has been really nice about the Gemini Lake generation of affordable Intel chips. Uh, these seem to have very good Linux compatibility with recent versions of Ubuntu and a number of other distributions as well. So I think if you're looking to buy this without an OS, you can easily get a free Linux operating system to work on here and have a very functional computer that you can piece together uh, with the parts that you want. So that's going to do it for our look here at the Leva Z2, a nice little fanless mini PC. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.